Dan Central here and welcome to a collection video but not your typical collection video. Normally collection videos tend to be um, showing off all your Sega Mega Drive games or how many consoles you own uh, or like I've done in the past how many cheap books you've got um, and a lot of it is quite commercial stuff really that you know quite common amongst you know gamers in general. However, I'm going to be doing something that's not particularly your, you know, your average collection and it's going to be on repros. Now, if any of you have seen episode 2 of Dan Central's Topic of the Week, it was on repros and I was asking all of you out there what your views are on repros, um, do you think they're a good idea, bad idea, if you own any, uh, what ones do you own if you do, are there any that you don't own but you'd love to get your hands on, etc, etc. So, I've kind of had repros on my mind lately. I've been playing quite a few repros today, actually. Um, and actually played through one and completed it all the way through, which was really, really fun. I loved it. And when I get to it, I'll, I'll let you guys know which one that was that I completed today. And, uh, yeah, just, I think they're fantastic. But I thought I'd show you guys what I've got because I'm really proud of them. I've been on a little bit of a spending spree. Some of you already know this. Um, and it's just so random considering, you know, up until a couple of months ago, I hadn't a clue what repros were. You know, I'd never heard of them. When I first heard about them, I still wasn't too sort of um, fascinated by it. It wasn't until I started finding out more and more about them and realised that a lot of it um, sort of included Sonic stuff as well. And then I suddenly realised what you can actually do in terms of getting Sonic packs that have only ever been available so far online. And now you can play them on home consoles or genuine Sonic games that are only ever made available on a certain console exclusively and now someone's been able to port them over onto another console so you can play it on something different. Um, for example, a Game Gear exclusive game that's been ported over to the Master System which was never on the Master System in the first place but now you can play it on the Master System. Um, and that just got me so excited and before I knew it I ended up having quite a few because I went and bought quite a, quite a few repros. Um, all of my repros therefore are Sonic and uh, which probably doesn't come to much of a surprise to a lot of you out there that follow my channel. But um, I thought I'd just show them so you guys can see what they look like. You're more than welcome to ask me any questions about them. And uh, yeah, just to let you know that these do exist and you can get them if you know where to look. A lot of these I've actually got on eBay. Um, but there are also other web websites you can go on um, where they sell some of them on there as well. There's a lot of repro websites. You can do a Google search. And generally you'll find at least something that will be selling, you know, a few of them that you can have a look at and see if you like them. And if you do, potentially you might even want to buy them yourself. So, I mean, I've shown some of these in videos before and others I haven't shown at all ever before on camera. Um, so we'll start with one that I have shown before. Um, if you saw it, fantastic, you'll remember. If you didn't see it, then obviously you'll be seeing it now for the first time. So the first one I'm going to show is a game called... Sonic Eraser. This is the first repro game that I'm going to be showing today. And doesn't it just look so authentic it's, and as if it's almost like it's 100% official and genuine? You know, the, the guys that do these, they do such a good job of them. Um, and I've bought repros off of a few people actually, and uh, they always do great jobs, they're always great to communicate with, they're always more than happy to answer your questions as well if you're not too sure about anything to do with them and just such friendly guys and whether it's them that do the actual work or they have a friend that does it for them and they sell it on um, it's still incredibly impressive and skilled work that they do so Sonic Eraser, uh, open it up obviously there's the um, there's the cart in there as well now this is a Sonic game that technically is apparently part of the Sonic the Hedgehog series however it's not technically a Sonic game as you or me would expect to see it. Um, it's basically like Columns, so it could have been called Sonic Columns to be fair. Um, but basically, it was only ever available on what was called um, the Sega Mega Net, which was only ever available back in the day for this Japanese Sega Mega Drive. And because of that reason, uh, you know, Sega fans in Europe um, never really were made aware of it because it was sort of Japan only. So, you know, um, the guys in the States, in the UK, they never really were made aware of this much because, you know, it was only ever available on the, on the Japanese Sega Mega Drive. Um, it was only 
when we got to the early 2000s that um, the ROM was actually picked up online and made available worldwide that people were even getting a chance to even play it as, as, a, as a general game. Um, and then from there, you know, very clever people have been able to actually then get it on a car. This started off on a Japanese Mega Drive cartridge and um, was very cleverly then ported over onto a UK PAL cartridge. So yeah, great to own this and just to be able to plug this into the, a PAL Mega Drive and be able to play it, for me it's fantastic because this isn't necessarily what you class as a ROM or a hack. This back in the day was a genuine game that was made officially, um, just wasn't made worldwide, um, so not many people knew about it. Okie doke, so from there then, um, I'm going to move on to a Master System repro that I've shown um, recently as well in another video, but in case you haven't seen it. And this is a Master System port of Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble. Now my really good friend Aidan Watkins has also picked up a copy of this and um, he's loving it just as much as I am. Now for those of you that are big Sonic fans, or even if you're not, you still might know this to be fair, um, Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble was only ever evade, evade? It's only ever made available, bit of a tongue twister, um, on the Sega Game Gear. But someone's very cleverly been able to port it over onto a Master System cartridge. So now you can take it from a handheld or from a tiny screen and play it on the big screen using obviously a Master System, the Master System controller, or even the Mega Drive controller because they're obviously dual compatible. What I've done, I've actually bought um, an official Master System converter which enables me to play Master System games on my Mega Drive and uh, I play it through that. So I don't have to get my Master System console out itself. I've got my Mega Drive Model 2 connected to my Mega CD Model 2 and I've now got um, a Master System um, converter Model 2 uh, that enables me to put the, you know, the Mega Drive cartridge in, into the converter. The converter then goes into the Mega Drive Model 2 and obviously I've got a Mega CD sitting next to it as well anyway. So it's an, it's an amazing setup and a setup that I've been wanting to achieve for ages and now I finally have, so it's fantastic. Um, so that's kind of how I play it. If you look on the back, it looks really good as, as well. The only weird thing is that one of the screenshots, as I've said before, is actually Mario in what looks like a Donkey Kong Country 2 styled level as opposed to Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble. So it is a little bit random. But all the others seem to be from Sonic Triple Trouble, so there we go. And if I open it up, again, it looks so authentic as if almost like it was official back in the day. It just looks like it was actually released on the Mars system back in the day, the way they've actually, you know, pulled it off. So, absolutely amazing, and it works so well. It really, really does, so I'm so chuffed with that. Okay, from here, um, I'm going to move on to a very famous hack, and one that has been renowned as one of the best Sonic the Hedgehog hacks ever done. Um, I totally agree with that, actually. It's one of the most famous ones, one of the most impressive ones I've ever played, and that's... Sonic Megamix, created by Team Megamix, and um, is widely available on Sonic, Sonic Retro. Yeah. Um, so I basically got two versions of this because they've been they've released different releases um, over the, the, the past sort of couple of years. Um, the first one is actually a, a version of it that I've actually got on cartridge um, for the Sega Mega Drive. This is Sonic Megamix version 3.0. Love this, really, really good. Uh, what they've done with it in terms of the level designs and you know, just being able to play as all three characters is absolutely fantastic. And when you change character, it doesn't just you know keep the, the levels the same and, and the music the same, it changes everything. The music changes, the level designs change, and you know, their abilities are different from character to character as well. So it's absolutely fantastic. Don't have a box for it because when I, when I bought it off eBay, it just didn't come with a box. I could make my own, and I may do that one day if I do. Obviously, I'll show that to you guys on camera as well. And then they released another version, Sonic Mega Mix 4.0, but this actually went onto the Mega CD as opposed to the Mega Drive. Obviously, it's now going to be more powerful and it can store more data on it being a disc as well. So, there's how it looks on the Mega CD. Again, it looks so authentic, very genuine. Um, I love what they've done with this. It looks absolutely fantastic. And what they've also done, they've even gone one step further and actually made uh, a full colour instruction booklet. Oh, hang on. So, you know, when you open it up, you know, you've got the contents, you've got a storyline there, which is absolutely brilliant. They've actually done that. You know, you flick over again, you've got the pictures of the characters, you know, in full colour. So impressed. It even has that new smell still on it as well, which is really cool. Flicking through it a bit further, pictures of the items that you can pick up and what they enable you to do. 
um, etc etc so it's so chuffed they put in all that effort as well to print off that and then obviously the actual disc itself um, is there too obviously uh, and just looks great as well so so pleased to have this you know to have two different versions of Sonic Mega Mix and they do differ as well um, so I can play a version of it on the Mega Drive or you can play it on the Mega CD depending on how I'm feeling um, so yeah two different versions then of the awesome Sonic hack Sonic Mega Mix now from here I've also got another one called Phantom Sonic now when I bought this um, in the first place I had the offer of, of buying it with its official box um, but I decided not to because although I did want to play it and own the game for me it's not one of my favorite hacks that was ever been done and it's, it's still quite close to the original anyway. There's only a slight change. So for me, I didn't want to shell out more money to get a box when actually it's not something that I'm really... I don't mean that I'm not proud to own it. But it's just more the fact that it doesn't really change the original too much. So for me, I'm just happy to have it as a car only. And also it saves on space as well. And that's basically a hack called Phantom Sonic. So if you look up there, you can see it there. And obviously you'll see that Sonic looks quite evil. You know, his eyes are very dark, you know, bleeding as well. Um, and it's all red in the, in the background as well. Uh, basically what this is, it's, it's a hack of Sonic 1. When you put it in, it starts off exactly how Sonic 1 would. You know, if you, you know it's almost like you put the official Sonic 1 cart into your Mega Drive and, and switched it on. What happens is after about, I don't know, maybe five to ten seconds, it goes all kind of static as if like you turn this machine off and it gives you all that static stuff. It goes all static for about, I don't know, three, four seconds and then it goes all dark. And all it does, the level looks exactly the same still, but the, the colour palette changes so it's a lot darker, so it looks a bit more dark and evil. And then basically you have, I think it's, I don't know, ten, ten seconds, something like that, to find a TV. And while you're trying to look for, for a TV, there's actually another Sonic, a Phantom Sonic, that starts to fly in from the left and starts to fly towards you. And if you don't get a TV before he actually gets right close to you, he grabs you and you die almost like you're underwater and you get them numbers starting to count down. Um, but if you, if you jump on a TV, it goes static again for a bit and then goes straight back to how Sonic 1 would look normally. So, you know, most of it just looks like Sonic 1 would, but the only difference is, as I say, it goes dark every now and again. And you have to basically find the next TV in the level before this other Phantom Sonic grabs you. Um, it is really hard as well, and if you lose all your lives and you die, it actually gets even more creepy, and you get a massive picture of an evil Sonic, like, like come really close to the screen. You know, like on viral videos where they make you try and concentrate on something, and then they fool you by getting like a horrible corpse. You know, appear on the on the on the um, as, as a close up on the video, going ah, and sort of makes you jump kind of thing, and you're like, oh, yes, sort of thing, sort of catches you unaware. It's almost like that, and it says at the top, it says I am God at the top, so it's really creepy. I remember playing this quite late at night, and it really did freak me out actually. But it's still so close to Sonic One that for me, it's not almost like it's a new game as such. So I've decided just to keep the original car uh, as opposed to getting the box as well. Cool, and then. I've got three more to show, and these are basically three amazing, amazing hacks that I own, that I have the boxes for, because they are, in my opinion, they, they make the originals look so different. So it's almost like they are new games, um, even though they're not sort of branded like you would get a game nowadays. But it, it makes the originals look so different that it is new, in a way, if that makes sense. And... I will save the best one to last, actually, the one that I'm most excited to own, actually. Um, and we'll go with this one first, actually. So the first one I'm going to show um, that I've obtained with the box as well is, uh, some of you may have heard of this, to be fair, may have played it online or via emulation, etc. And that's a game called The S Factor, Sonya and Silver. It's basically uh, a hack um, using um, Sonya and Silver, obviously. Sonya, if you ever watched Sonic Underground, the, uh, the old Sonic TV series, Sonya was in there, uh, if you remember that, that's where she's from. And Silver the Hedgehog is in Sonic Rivals, I believe. He's, he's cropped up in a few Sonic games in the past. Um, and he's making a reoccurrence, or reappearance, shall I say, in, in this game. Um, you'll also notice that there's another um, hedgehog at the bottom that's green. He's called Scourge. Um, now, I thought when you first turn this on, you could select Scorch straight away and play as him as well as either Sonya or Silver. You could basically select between the three of them. Turns out that's not the case. And 
when I turned it on, I could only choose between Sonya and Silver, and that was it. So I was thinking, well, that's a bit of a bummer, because I'd love to play Scourge. Reason being, he looks exactly like Sonic, he's just green. So because you can't play as Sonic at all in this game, which is a shame, because the levels are amazing, the designs are so completely different again, um, it's a shame you can't play as Sonic. But if you can unlock Scourge, he looks exactly the same as Sonic, but he's just green. So apart from him being green, you could just imagine it's, it's, you're still playing as Sonic. So I did a load of research, and I managed to work out how to unlock him and play as him. And I tell you, it was so fun. Basically, there's a load of passwords. You have to go to the um, options screen on, on this on this hack. And you put in some certain passwords. And um, then when you reset and go back to the, the character select screen, he suddenly appears, so you can select him. Um, but there's also other passwords where you can get 99 lives. Um, and you can also do other things as well that help you out throughout the game. Uh, and another thing you can do that I didn't realise, you can actually play as Blaze the Cat as well, as another additional secret character. But the funny thing is, though, that when she stands still, she looks exactly like Blaze that you would have seen in Sonic Rush on the DS if you've ever played it. Um, when she starts to run, she suddenly looks like Sonic, so it's a bit random. But yeah, I've managed to unlock Scourge the Hedgehog as well as Blaze the Cat as well. And also you can play as obviously Silver and Sonya anyway. And also the great thing too is that when you go to the special stages, they actually play like the, the just like normal levels again. If you look here, on my finger is there, that is actually meant to be a special stage. But when you get when you actually, when you actually get to it, it plays as if you're just playing for another um, new action stage. So that's really cool. Um, and yet if I just take this out as well, you get to see it there. But honestly guys, if you've not heard of this one, do some research, have a look at a few videos on YouTube. It's such a good game, the level designs are beautiful, and yeah, just so much fun. There's even a screenshot on the back of Scores the Hedgehog being played, so that's why it's even more random that you can't actually select him unless you put certain passwords in. Um, so it is possible, and if anyone ever gets this and isn't too sure how to do it, feel free to ask me, and I can put it in the right direction and you can actually unlock Scourge. It's really easy, you haven't got to put in loads of different codes like, like you used to put in cheats years ago. Um, you haven't got to do anything like that. It's not long-winded, it's really simple, and you'll be able to play with him straight away. So there you go, that's the S Factor, Sonya and Silver, but you can also play as Scourge the Hedgehog if you put the right passwords in, which I can point you in the right direction if you need any advice, and also Blaze the Cat as well. Right, the next one, which I was playing earlier on today as well, is um, another hack which, again, when I saw it online and everything, I just had to have it. Although, well, I say I had to have it, when I first saw it, I was a little bit unsure because I thought you could only play as this one character. But then I realised that if you go into the option screen, you can actually change it to play as Sonic, um, Kirby, believe it or not, or Mario. So that kind of um, persuaded me in the end. But basically, it's a game called Metal Sonic Hyperdrive. So again, you'll see Metal Sonic on the front there, looking actually really, really cool. And then obviously on the back, you'll see very heavily um, situated around Metal Sonic. And I thought, obviously, I thought you could only play as Metal Sonic, and that's it. But then I looked at some videos on YouTube, and to say you could actually change it to actually play as Sonic himself, or Samari, which is basically Mario, or Kirby, or what's called the Lone Devil. Basically, what the Lone Devil is, is um, the person that created this hack is called Lone Devil. Um, so when you turn the actual hack on, it says Lone Devil, it says Lone Devil Presents or something. And basically, it's an actual, it's an additional character with like a, it's like a, a dark coloured devil that actually, when you jump, it actually glides forwards a bit like Knuckles does, but he doesn't, he doesn't sort of put his arms forward, he just shoots forwards. And he can also, when you're jumping up vertically, I think he can actually also do like a fire thing where he sort of jumps a bit higher and he has fire that surrounds him as well to give him more of a powerful lift as he goes up. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's another additional character that I've never ever seen or played, played as before. So that was pretty cool. But as I said, you know, Metal Sonic plays really well as well, but it was really nice to be able to choose Sonic himself to play as well in this game, because obviously, again, the level designs are completely different. If anyone's interested, on my gaming Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash gaming369, I've actually got some pictures on there. If you go into the pictures section of myself playing as Kirby and Mario in um, Metal Sonic Hyperdrive, and also Sonic himself as well, and showing you what some of the actual level designs look like playing it on screen. Um, but again, you can see some on the back there. Uh, I don't know how clear that is, but there are some screenshots of, of Mario being played, the Lone Devil being played, Sonic being played, Kirby being played, and obviously Metal Sonic himself being played. Even says on the back, five playable characters, and it lists them all there anyway. So the, the other thing is that you can choose between three different difficulty modes, um, normal, hard, or extreme. 
And there's also uh, what's called a special master quest mode. But at the minute, I can't seem to work out what the difference between master quest and just the normal game start mode is, because they both seem to start the same. But I'm, I'm sure I'll figure that out at some point, what the difference is. But yeah, if you're interested in seeing what this is like, especially when you can play as not just Sonic as well, but also Mario and Kirby, believe me, Kirby is really cute and really fun to play as. Because normally, when you do spin dash with Sonic, you press you know um, down and sort of tap B. When you do the same combination with Kirby, or he doesn't spin dash, he actually does his, his classic, um, you know, where he actually, you know, sucks in all the all the items around him, and, sort of goes, and everything kind of goes into his into his mouth. Um, with this one, it just all the rings, like a bit like when Sonic used to have the um, electric kind of um, item in Sonic Three, and all the rings would be attracted to him. Um, Kirby does that where he just basically swallows everything around him. So that's really, really cool to see is, is actually they actually use his um, classic um, feature in this game. And also, depending on what character you're playing, when you complete each level, they get their, their actual jingle that is associated with that character. So if it's Sonic, you get the whole classic sort of thing. Uh, if you've got Mario, uh, when you complete a level, it actually starts going from obviously Super Mario Brothers on the NES. So, you know, that's a really, really nice touch. Just little things like that, I, I really, really um, um, appreciate all that stuff as well, because it obviously you didn't have to do stuff like that. So it's really nice to have those little kind of anecdotes in there as well. And finally, sorry, I know guys, we've gone over 20 minutes, it's not good. So really quickly then, finally, the last one I'm gonna show, which is the last one that I own currently, and it's one of my most prized repros that I have because it's not necessarily a hack as such, um, where someone's created something, like taken an original and kind of messed about with it. This is like something that I've wanted to be able to do and play on an original console for years. Now, obviously Sonic 2 on the Mega Drive, is a is an absolutely amazing Sonic game, and it's got loads of levels. It's one of the longest Sonic games actually um, on on 16-bit, and uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. And a lot of you out there, I'm sure, will know that there were other levels that were originally planned to be in Sonic 2, but were later scrapped and cut out of the um, the final game. Um, but they have surfaced since, and you can actually play them and experience them. And what someone's done is they've taken all of the levels that were cut from the original Sonic 2 and put them into uh, an extra um, re what's called an, e an extra repro um, into an extra game that's called Sonic the Lost Worlds. So it's all the games that were originally cut from the the actual proper Sonic 2. Now there's actually um, I know there was um, there was a prototype that was uh, released first. Um, Oh, it doesn't sit on the back of here though. There was a prototype that was released first that had some of the um, beta levels in it, but they were sort of quite broken. They weren't sort of properly finished. And someone's come along and basically cleaned them all up and has also thrown in some other levels based on interviews that they've watched from like um, members of Sonic Team talking about how the abandoned levels were meant to look, you know, if they were meant to be, if they're actually included in the original Sonic 2. And someone's used all of that knowledge and taken some of the sort of broken levels from an early prototype cleaned them all up, extended them, finished them off, brought them over to his project, um, stuck them in there, and also, as I said, they've looked at other interviews for people um, that were talking about other levels that were going to be included, kind of used that knowledge and kind of, found, sort of, uh, I suppose, created the rest of the levels, and um, it's basically then come up with Sonic The Lost World. So they're pretty much as close to the abandoned levels that Sonic Team were going to put, or Sega were going to put into the original Sonic 2 as they could possibly get, um, you know, um, compared to what they were going to put in the first place. So, yeah, this is all of the abandoned levels from Sonic 2. And to just to be able to play all of them on the original Sega Mega Drive PAL model is just amazing. And this is the game that I completed from start to finish today, and I absolutely loved it. So it's got Dust Hill Zone, it's got Rock Zone, it's got Wood Zone, it's got Winter Zone as well. Uh, Hidden Palace Zone, the original Hidden Palace, not the one that you get in Sonic 3, the original Hidden Palace Zone, um, or should I say Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Also featured in this game is the Sonic 2 beta version of Casino Night Zone from Sonic 2. It looks completely different to how it looks in the finished Sonic 2. It's an earlier version, an earlier design that they 
were originally planning on using and then it later got scrapped. But in my opinion, it looks so much better. It's more vibrant, it's a lot more colorful, there's a lot more brighter colors in it, and it just played so well and I absolutely loved it. So I'm gonna put some pictures in the corner now of how the beta version looks. Guys, let me know what you think. Do you think it looks interesting? Would you play it? Um, or does it not look that interesting to you at all and you're not too fussed by it? Let me know, that'd be awesome. I'm trying to do a thumbs up and I was sort of, went to point down to say post underneath and as I was sort of was gonna do a thumbs up as well, it didn't quite work. Anyway, um, yeah, let me know guys. But yeah, and also the other one is Cyber City Zone as well. So guys, being able to play all of the abandoned levels from Sonic 2 is just incredible. So yeah, guys, that's my repro collection. Sorry, it's gone on for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm so proud to own all of these. So I've got I've got loads on Mega Drive. I've got the odd one on Master System and Mega CD as well. Um, so yeah, they're just some. There's obviously more on the floor still, but they're just some there um, that I own, as well as obviously Sonic Mega Mix and Phantom Sonic um, are there as well. So thanks a lot for watching this video guys, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of repros in general. If you've got any repros, feel free to show off your collections, that would be awesome to see. And um, yeah, just feel free to let me know what you think of these repros in general. Um, and if you want to know about any more of them, feel free to ask me any questions if you're intrigued by any of them. And um, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you've got. Cheers everybody and I'll see you very soon in another video. Take it easy.